Nice to see you. How are you, Heidi? Huh? Mm -hmm. Fine, thank you. Good. Mm. You just woke up. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> <sighs> So how many how many lessons do you take now in, in the morning? morning? You know before you before you do your usual two or three. chores. Two or three. Two or three, yeah. Yeah. I see. Ah, I have muscle pain. <laughs> your pains in the muscles. Yes, muscle pain. Well, in your arms or were you lifting something maybe? Shadow boxing. Shadow boxing. <laughs> nice. That's a, a nice sport to get into. Yeah. And that topic is sports and hobbies. So you, you're doing shadow boxing for real? Shadow boxing. It's very good. Because I have with, muscle pain. <laughs> with, with a big cast on your arm. And you still do. Only shadow boxing. <laughs> Okay. Oh, here we go. <coughs> VS Love. Hello. Hello, Alan. Welcome. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Thank you for asking. I'm well. Guten Appetit. Thank you. <laughs> Good appetit. <laughs> <Mild slides. laughs> uh, how is it in English? Um... <laughs> oh man! Actually, in English, um, <laughs> taste good. No. No, usually if you're drinking something, you might just say cheers. Um, but if you wish you uh, guten appetit in German, how mm -hmm. uh, should I say in English? Um. Well, there's nothing like that really. I don't think. Um, is there? How would you say it? I, I've never heard anyone really. All taste bad. Usually, no. Usually, there are some some French words. You see, there are some French words with, which uh, English have adopted. So you might say bon appétit. Ah, bon appétit. You know? But in English, in the English language, I don't think there's anything similar to that. You know. Mm -hmm. You know, you just say bon appétit, and uh, it's like they've taken it from the French. They've adopted that sort of, uh, you know, saying. Have you heard anyone say anything like that in English? I don't. I don't think it exists. No. No. Yeah. Oh, but you can look it up. Uh, the translation would be good appetite. You know, good appetite, uh, bon appetit means good appetite. But I've never heard that. Been spoken mm. in English. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, that, that's you know, sometimes in certain languages um, you cannot literally translate it. It just wouldn't make sense. Yes. Welcome back, Soso. -so. Good evening. Hello, friend. Hello. <clears throat> so, Vyslav, did you watch the football or did you hear about the football? <clears throat> Yesterday, you mean? Yeah, yeah, of yeah. Of course. Yeah. You have a lesson, I saw. Well. <laughs> it's a pity. Uh, it's a pity, yeah. I guess we were fortunate. We were fortunate. <clears throat> but, however, um, we had a few chances. It, should, it could have been 3 0, easily. Uh, did you yes. watch the, some of the highlights? Or towards the end, especially. But you mean for Arsenal or for Borussia? Well, Borussia had, had uh, chances as well, but yes. they, only, they only had, I think, one or two, like, 100%, you know, goal-scoring opportunities. Um, you know, Arsenal had, I think, two or three really good chances. Yes. And, 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 uh, but more, there was more uh, activity from Dortmund, from Borussia Dortmund, which was clear. Do you, uh, are you a supporter of uh, Arsenal or Bor Borussia? 
Arsenal, of course. <laughs> Arsenal. <laughs> I don't know uh, which uh, should I support because in Arsenal play um, Polish in both teams. Yeah. Yes, in both team uh, play Polish uh, player. Yes, the goalkeeper as well as another defender, is it Koscielny, but he's French Polish, I believe. Uh, no. Koscielny, yes, yeah, but it's French. It's French, but it's the Polish uh, name, really. Ah, I see. So you Maybe the, 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 the parents go away yes. hundred years ago. How you from Bosnia? Yes. Yes? Exactly, yeah, you're right. Yours. Just like I've, I've left Bosnia and went to Australia, yes, that's right. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've been Arsenal. I've been an Arsenal supporter for a while, and uh, during our ups and downs, uh, there were a lot of downs, unfortunately, in the last few seasons. But we're getting there. I think this is the most promising team, um, a team of players that we've seen for a long time for Arsenal. So yeah, next we play Man United on the weekend. That's going to be another challenge. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll. My son is terrible uh, supporter for Chelsea. I was oh, several so. time in London on this mm, match. Really, you watched yeah. the actual football match on the, in the stadium? Yes. Oh, nice. See, Arsenal haven't had a chance to go to to Arsenal. I actually only watched Bayern Munich in, in Germany, and I also like Bayern Munich. That was my first team I supported. This is a very boring subject for for Heidi and Soso. They don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, get over it already. <laughs> okay, let's talk about shadow boxing, Heidi. Teach us something. <laughs> Soso, which sports do you like again? So so, are you there? Yes. Yeah. What kind soccer. Of you oh, you like soccer? That's alright. Yeah, but not that big fan. I'm not a huge fan. Okay. Any team that you uh, might cheer for? Real Madrid. Real Madrid. Let me guess. Cristiano or Karim Benzema? All the team. <laughs> Usually, all the all the ladies are fancy around Madrid, around Madrid because of Cristiano. And he's a he's a magnet for the ladies. But he's a good player. I I, I gotta give it to him. Um, Vyslav, what do you think? Who who's better, uh, Messi or Ronaldo? Uh, it's difficult to say, but I always dream about that. That, uh, for example. Uh, in attack would be play Messi, uh, Ronaldo, and Ibrahimovic because I like oh. it too. Uh, in the uh, in the middle Beckham, and uh, yes, uh, uh, and okay, it it will it will be uh, dream teams. Oh, that would be amazing. But you know that uh, Met, I mean Ibrahimovic already played for Barcelona when so he played uh, with Messi already early, but now for Saint Germain. Yeah, Paris Saint Germain, and he's doing wonders. He's doing miracles there. The amount of goals he's scoring. I think he he's one of the he's in the top three of, of becoming the the world footballer of the year. Apparently, there's Ronaldo, Messi, and Ibrahimovic. So it's yes. between the three of them. He has a soccer instinct. Oh, and he's he's in his thirties. Can you believe it? He's won he's won so many titles. I don't think any striker in in uh, you know has ever won so many titles with different teams in different leagues. You know, from Italy to Spain, uh, now to uh, France. I think before that in in the Netherlands. I don't know where did he come from originally. I don't know. Vladimir, welcome. Hi, Alan. Long time no see. How are you? Mm, not as long. <laughs> yeah, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, we're just having a little discussion about um, sport and um, you know, the football. So what you been doing? I haven't seen you for a few days. 
Oh, I was training. I I made my first experience with rope jumping. Really? Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> and I was working a lot. Oh, I see. So you're very busy. Busy man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got to keep busy. I'm also I'm quite busy at this time. But fortunately, we're having a really good, uh, some really good weather over here. It's really sunny. Every day is sunny. Even though it's cold, but it's it's sunny, so it's okay. It doesn't spoil your outdoor activities, which I'm <laughs> glad. Uh, even though it's cold, but it's survivable. Every time I look at Vyslav's picture, I get I get the chills because of the, the, the cold, the cold and the snow and the mountains in the background. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm wearing a t-shirt, so I'm getting cold. I noticed that. I, I maybe I changed my photo. <laughs> or maybe because I should put a, ju a jumper on, huh? A lot of people here is from uh, warm countries. <laughs> this way, my photo is terrible. <laughs> it's not. It's not terrible. It's just uh, you know, it gives me the cold. It's, it looks very cold. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, let's begin, shall we? Let's let's get started. Um, so, sports and hobbies is going to be a topic, like we mentioned. So, if you don't mind. Tell us when your birthday is. You don't have to tell us the exact year, but June sixteenth. Okay. Thank you, Vladimir. Vyslav or Heidi? Uh, sorry, but I don't understand. Uh, when? Tell us when your birthday is. When is your birthday? Uh, you mean? Birthday, the year or uh, month? Whatever you want. You can give us. You don't have to give us your full date if you, if you don't want to. It's fine. So you can give second, us maybe the second March. Uh, second of March. Good. Okay. And Heidi. Uh, fifth of May. Fifth of May. Okay. Excellent. And Soso, good. You can come back. Soso, can you hear me? So, so. <clears throat> yes. Oh, there you are. Do you, we were just. Uh, I was asking um, when your birthday is. Do you mind telling us when your birthday is? Twenty fifth of September. Okay. Good. All right. Uh, so none of you gave me a full answer. <laughs> That's okay. Ah. And also the year, uh, 1986. Okay. Um, all right. So tell me, what time do you usually eat dinner? Is it usually the same time, or no? Does it vary? So give us some some time and and try to give me a whole sentence if you can. I usually have dinner at nine o'clock, nine p.m. But sometimes okay. I can have it more earlier, like seven o'clock or eight. Okay, that's good. What about the others, Vyslav? When do you eat dinner? Uh, I usually have a dinner at uh, four p.m. Four p.m. Okay. And uh, Vladimir and Heidi? Oh, I usually eat five or six times a day. So it's hard to <laughs> understand which one of them is dinner. <laughs> wow! So you have a good diet. So you actually yes. um, you break it up throughout the whole day, and then you have mm. small. Like animals. eat like almost each three hours. Oh. So when is your latest meal? Oh, my latest is about one or two a.m. Really? Yeah. So you don't you don't go to bed before uh, mm -hmm. because of your working times, I guess. Yeah. Your is your working shifts maybe because of that. Yeah. Even now it's quarter past uh, midnight. 
Yes. So what time do you go to bed? Mm. About 3 o'clock. Oh, I see. Okay. And Heidi? Do you remember? <laughs> yeah? I, I usually have dinner around um, at, at around seven um, around at seven thirty p.m. Uh, seven thirty is because your husband comes back at seven, so then you have it around seven thirty. Uh, yeah. Yes, I remember now. Okay, good, good. So now, obviously, what I'm asking from you guys here is to give me times, and when we use times or dates. We need to use a preposition, and this is called the preposition of time. So I'm sure you guys have done this before, <clears throat> but for those who haven't, uh, the ones that we're actually going to focus on are uh, on, in, at, before, and after. Okay, so those are the ones which usually we use in the English language when it comes to prepositions of time, and. Now, this pronunciation skill we're going to cover now. I mean, I think all of you, when you said your dates, you pronounce the TH correctly. But just to make sure, we'll briefly cover it and go through it. So, this is the voiceless TH. You have the voiceless TH. Um, as you know, there are two types of TH sounds one is voice, one is voiceless. So, this one. Um, we always put at the end of the uh, day. So if you say a date, for example, the 4th, you will have that sound, the voiceless TH. So the 4th of July, uh, 15th, 15th century. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a day. <clears throat> and let me hear you guys say it. Again, just so I can make sure that you guys are on the right path. So, dear Slav, can you say those three numbers, please? The dates. Fourth, twenth, thirty-fourth. Uh, yes. So it's fourteenth, yeah, twentieth, and thirty-fourth. Okay, Vladimir. Okay. 14th, 20th, 34th. Good. Yes. So so. 14th, 20th, and 34th. 34th. Yes. Okay. Heidi. 14th, 20th. Uh, 34th. Ah, good. Thank you very much. I, I noticed, you know, when sometimes when English learners look at numbers rather than hearing or seeing it written, sometimes we might, or they might struggle in pronouncing it. So 14, if you want to add or use it like a date, for example, the day of the month, you will say 14th. Yeah, all you're doing is adding the, the voiceless th sound to 14. So 14th, 20, 20th. There's a syllable after the that y letter. So mm -hmm. 20th. Instead of saying 20th, it's not 20th like the previous one, 14th. So 20th, the 20th, and 34th. Here, there's no syllable either. You just add the, the th sound. So 34, right? And you add th, so 34. OK. Uh, or other than that, your, your, your voiceless th sound is OK. So just remember, maybe practice practice all of them because sometimes the teen, the teens like from 11 to 19 uh, they're different obviously compared to you know 20 
second, twenty third, twenty fourth, and so on, and then the other ones up. So practice them as much as you can, so you get that fluency when you speak. Okay, any questions about this? The voice th sound or the numbering? No. Okay. Okay, let's quickly go through the grammar and uh, see when and how we can use some of these uh, prepositions of time. <clears throat> um, so as you know, there are many prepositions you can use uh, for place, time, and movement. So we're focusing here on time. So here the example given to us, the mouse was on the box before you open the door. Yeah, before you open the door, the mouse was on the box. So the ones we're going to use, on, in, at, before, and after. So on, we use for specific days and dates. Yeah, like on Sunday, on Monday, um, you know, I went to school on Monday even though it was so cold. Then dates, on the 13th, on the 1st, on January 11th, 2015. Special days and holidays, on my birthday, on Christmas, and so on. Uh, at, for an exact time, like I asked you earlier, what time do you usually have dinner? You said, oh, at 8 o'clock, at 7.30, and so on. So specific times, we said at 1 o'clock, or even more specific, it's, uh, 5.47, at 5.47 p.m. Um, or if you're asking, when does the train arrive? It arrives at exactly 5.45, and so on. Time expressions, at midnight, at noon, at lunchtime, at sunset, and at this moment. This moment is also a time expression. So, so far we've covered on, at, and now we come to in. In we use for long periods of time, like a whole month. Yeah, so months in January, in June, so when is your birthday, you say, in which month is your birthday? Oh, it's in January. Okay. Seasons, uh, in spring, in summertime, in the summertime. Um, Pierce Love's uh, picture was taken in, in winter. Okay. Years, in 2013, in the 90s, or in the 18th century. Okay. And then periods. So in the Stone Age, uh, in the future, in my youth, yeah, this is also uh, representing time. So all of these we use in. And now when it comes to before and after, we use them to uh, designate a time in reference to another event. So there has to be another event in the sentence. But you do not need to use another preposition after it. So the correct way of saying it is, I need to buy a present before my sister's birthday. Mm. So you've got to do something before something else. I need to buy a present before my sister's birthday. Incorrect way of saying it would be, I need to buy a present before on my sister's birthday. <clears throat> so you don't need that other um, preposition. It's just before. Okay, guys, so that's, that's that. Um, anything you want to ask me before I, you know, we do some practice? No. No. Okay, so let's do this. Um, all right, give me a sentence using on. Um, Heidi. Yeah, and use on as the preposition of oh, time. Oh. We are going to the a restaurant on his birthday. On his birthday. Yeah. Okay. 
Do we agree with uh, Heidi's sentence? Yeah. No objections? Awesome. Yes. Thank you. Um, let's see. So, so, can you give me a sentence using in? Okay. I will travel to the UK in the summer. Yes. I will travel to the UK in summer. Yeah, it's a season. Excellent. Now, what uh, can you use before and after in your sentence, please? Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. You have to uh, learn English language before you go to the USA. Yeah. Good. Yeah. You have to or you should learn the English language before you travel to the USA. Nice. Very good sentence. And uh, Vyaslav, can you also use, uh, but actually use after rather than before? Mm -hmm. After uh, dinner, uh, okay. After uh, last, uh, uh, which response? After uh, your last li response, I uh, take new girl. I take. Can you, can you, I didn't understand the last bit. What did you say? Sorry. Uh, uh, I take a new girlfriend. Ah, oh, I took. Ah, I see. You can say I in took. the past. So, I took or well, you, you can't really use this word. Uh, verb. You can't say I took a new girlfriend. What other verb could you use instead of took? But so far it's good. So you're saying, I know. Ah, yeah. Good. Vladimir has helped you there. He said met. Met. Mm -hmm. Or you could say got. I got a new girlfriend. Cut. Yeah? Yeah. So uh, after your last response, I got a new girlfriend. I caught. <laughs> I caught. <laughs> caught by not the best. Yeah, it sounds so good. <laughs> <laughs> I caught, yeah, like catching a fish, you know, in the... In yeah. The <laughs> yeah, or you caught a bird, yeah? You can say, I caught a bird. <laughs> you know, bird yeah, is used for... Caught um, a cold. Or you caught a cold, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you're sick now. That's good, yeah, good sentence. Or you can even switch it. Uh, you can say, I... I um, you know, I caught a cold. I caught a cold after your last response or after the last time we spoke. All right, excellent. So that's that's that. It's pretty straightforward. There's nothing complicated about this. Um, there's no rulings which we need to uh, you know get a headache over. So um, okay, guys, let's do the discussion. Ooh, guess what? We're talking about football again. <laughs> Sorry, Heidi. Next time I'll try and choose boxing or something. Maybe. Oh, I have to be too big. Um, all right, so this is the history of the World Cup. So we might find out something interesting, yeah, that a lot of people probably haven't known. But, so how it all began, maybe I can make it even bigger, okay, so the seeds which marked the beginning of this great event were planted by the president of the World Football Federation in 1926. 
There would be no such thing as a World Cup history if it were not for uh, Jules Rimet. Uh, I don't know, I think that's a French name. Uh, who first took the presidency in 1921. The positive message uh, infused by Rimet is summarized by his famous words, soccer could reinforce the ideals of a permanent and real peace as he pushed to organize an international event that would make no discrimination on the grounds of professional and amateur status. As his words were spoken, the plans for a world tournament involving all of the federations was being planned for the coming three to four years. Plans was being? Pardon? Mm. Sorry? Sorry? Doesn't it have to be were being? Were being? Um, with, as his words were spoken, uh, plans are... The plans were being. Oh, well, right. Yeah, 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 true, true, true. You really picked that up, yes. So as his words were spoken, uh, spoken, the plans for a world tournament involving all of the federations yeah, were being planned. Um... Let's have a look here. If there's some other ruling that we have to keep in mind. As his words were spoken, the plans. Was being planned. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think he should be worth. Yeah, sometimes people make these mistakes. Whoever wrote this, I don't know. Uh, but good, you picked that up. Well done. You're paying attention. So. Along with the help of five other officials, Rimet or Rimet, uh, organized the event for 1930. Via congressional meetings of the World Football Federation, uh, the semantics for the tournament were laid out and finalized. On May uh, 26, 1928, the World Cup was born. History was changed forever as five European countries plus a chosen host of Uruguay planned to hold the first tournament on May 18, 1929, at the Congress of Barcelona. Uruguay was chosen as host based on their outstanding Olympic record, and as Rime was encouraging a regime of international peace, uh, utilizing the reputation of Olympic Games already held was simply intelligent leveraging. What is it? Um, regime. 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 Yeah. You know, like you have the. Uh, uh, like conditions? In this case, no, regime actually means that you have the um, governmental regime or. Um, I don't know, the Saddam's Iraq regime, you know, um, but in this case, uh, where's, where's the regime? I'm blind. Where, do, where is the regime? Hmm? I can oh, hear you region? clearly. Can you hear me? Or not? Yeah, yeah, it's okay now. All right, there was some disturbing. Where is your regime? I can't pick it up. I'm too close to the monitor. And as Rahmet was encouraging a regime of international peace. All oh, right, 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 right. There it is. Um, like a like state. He was he, no, not a state. He was encouraging um like a movement system in this case, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, so then continuing, the actualization of the event did not transpire until the year later, when on July 13th, 1930, the first game of the first World Cup kicked off in Poquito Stadium and France beat Mexico 4-1. This truly marked the beginning of a long and wonderful World Cup history. The first World Cup was the only event to not involve the modern qualifying rounds. 
The only European teams involved were France, Belgium, Yugoslavia, and Romania. Other European teams either wished to remain in purely amateur events or argued that the expected trip time uh, was far too long. Other than Uruguay, six additional South American teams participated, including Argentina, Brazil, Bolivia, Chile, or Chile, uh, Paraguay, and Peru. Two teams remained to complete the final 13 for 1930, Mexico and the U.S. The U.S. was utilizing a heavy or heavily Scottish roster for the event. In the end, it was Uruguay battling Argentina for the cup. Victory and the first World Cup went to Uruguay as they beat the Argentinians 4-2. to two. And this is a picture of them, the winners. Um, and if you want to see which country has maintained the best record over the course of the last six decades, you can uh, click here and then see that in detail. So, there you go. There you have it. So, any other questions? Um, one more. Work mm -hmm. leveraging. Uh huh. Let's have a look. I think that was close to the. Uh, yeah, close to the yeah, regime. Yeah. It was in the uh, same Olympics. line. Yeah, yeah. Um, like when you use, you can use here, I think it can be used as a. Um, like an advantage, uh -huh. you know. So you're using something to maximize the, uh, to to its maximum advantage. Yeah. So that you can use it in business terms, you know. But I think in this case, it, it's meaning about you know you're maximizing the advantages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Were there any other words? What's semantic? Guys, you know that? Which one? Semantic. I think there must be a delay because I'm I've highlighted it. There's usually a delay. Mm -hmm. Who knows what this is? Oh, it's hard to explain. What is all? I know it in linguistics. Yeah, yeah, it's a linguistic yeah. term. Yes, yes. The meaning of words. Ah, perfect. Exactly. You hit the nail right on its head. So, so. Yeah, that's it. Okay, I don't think there's any other vocabulary which we need to cover. Right, so, if there are no other questions from you guys, I'll move on to questioning you. So I'll begin by asking you this question. More general. When is the next big game you are looking forward to? I don't know if you follow football. Um, when is the next big game you're looking forward to? So you got to give me a date, a time, or something. And then using our lovely prepositions of time. Or when, okay, if you're not really playing football, um, anything you're interested in on TV and you're following like a, like a series or something, um, and then you're antici anticipating it when when it's gonna, you know, be broadcast. Vyslav, I think you you don't mind watching football. What yes. are you looking forward to? Yeah. What's your, what's the next big ma uh, game or match you are looking forward to? Mm, the next uh, games mm -hmm. will be in Sunday, uh, Saturday and Sunday. I think about Premier League. Yes, yes. So can you say it again? It will be when? When will it be? Uh, in. Mm, do you Saturday. Think we, do you say? Do we say in Saturday, or is there another? 
proposition we can use. Oh, man. I forgot. On? Ah, yes, that sounds better. On. On Saturday. On like Saturday and Sunday. Yes, excellent. Good. Vladimir, tell us something. What are you looking forward to? What is it? <laughs> oh. Or maybe you're looking forward to your next parkour training, or I don't know. No, no, actually, I'm looking for forward to one football game match. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be on March 12th. Yes. And it's it's going to be a, a game for one eighth for Cup of Russia. Mm -hmm. And uh, this game is interesting because uh, the team from my little town is going to play with uh, one of the best Russian football team. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's something to look forward to. I know it's, it's ages away. It's in March next year. But still, it's something to look forward to. When your yeah. uh, football team, from your local football team is playing the biggest yeah, club it's in, in the country. <laughs> it's it's unbelievable. <laughs> wow. Awesome, man. How big is your town? Mm, it's about 20 or 25,000. Wow, that's an achievement. Is this a competition or friendly match? It's a competition. It's one eighth for Russian Cup. Ah, so like uh, before quarter. I see, I see. Before the quarterfinals, there's a... Yeah, I know how, how to say it. Well, usually they say quarterfinals and then comes the semifinals and the final. But before that, usually it's like... Um, Group stages, or, or I don't know. It's not it, actually it's not group stages. So it's knockout. You just call it knockout then. It's knockout stages. Knockout stages. Very, yeah. So if they lose, you out, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. So so. Yes. What are you looking forward to, and when is it? Okay, mm -hmm. I'm looking for Mama Awards. On November twenty-second. November twenty-second. Oh, this is like the Music Awards, yeah? Yes, Eminent Asia Music Awards. All oh, right. Ah, uh, and where is it gonna be held? In Hong Kong. In Hong Kong. Ah, oh, I see. I see. Oh, that's cool. All right. Good. Yes. Good sentence as well. Heidi. Mm -hmm. What are you looking forward to? I'm literally uh, looking forward to <laughs> um, World Cup 2014. Uh, in, mm -hmm. in 2014, um, in Brazil. Ah, nice. Yeah, that's place. That's preposition of place, Heidi. So it's going to be 2014, yeah? But yeah. tell us the, the season it's going to be in. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Only in 2014. <laughs> usually, usually begins in the middle, Summer. like middle of the year, like June, July. I see. But in Brazil, what what season is it then? June, July. Autumn. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. is it because they're in the southern hemisphere, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it would be um, winter. Winter. I mean, it doesn't that get that? It doesn't <laughs> get that cold. <laughs> it makes sense in winter. Ooh, so we're gonna play football in winter. But in Brazil, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not like Russia winter, you know. <laughs> it's not like Russian winter. So. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Okay, that's good. All right, guys. Thank you, Heidi. Thanks. Uh, yeah, here uh, we even have like a break in football season for winter. Mm. Because it's impossible to play football. I know. In I the know. winter. <laughs> yeah, you have to. Yeah. And you see these World Cups, they always, they usually happen. I think we're going to ask you a question. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's one of the questions. I was, I'll, I'll wait. I'll, I'll hold myself. So the next question would be When did the first World Cup begin? Now you're going to refer to the article. When did the first World Cup begin? Now we were given a few dates here. Yeah?
it began and in 1930. Yeah. Uh, okay. Can you give me the, the full date? Oh, I wish I remember it. <laughs> the, the year is correct, yeah. The year is correct. It's in, in 1930. Oh, it was on July 13th? Yeah. July 13th, 1930. <clears throat> they actually planned it in, in uh, 1929. Yeah, so it was planned to be held on May 18th, but it never, uh, you know, happened. There was delay or whatever. So eventually, it happened the next year. Okay. Correct answer. Now, during this is the question I wanted to you know, refer to. During which months is the World Cup usually held? July. Is that, is that the best answer you can give me, Vladimir? <laughs> Come on. You know the purpose it of It is this usually is. held during July. Ah, nice. But is this the only month? Do you think they can fit the whole um, World Cup and all that? Maybe over, over a couple of months. So what was the other one? It is usually held during June and July. Yeah, most likely. Yeah. Well, they initially planned it at the very beginning, May. But if you look at nowadays, it's June and July. Yeah. And why? Why do you think that is? Because it's summer. Summertime. This is the next question. Are you sure? So why is the World Cup held in June and July? Summer. But if you look at, let's say, Australia or, or <clears throat> like South America, it's not summer in June and July there, like Brazil. It's kind of tradition. <laughs> but there's one very important reason there. I mean, who who performs? What's the whole? What's the main reason of? I mean, not main reason. Uh, how can I say this? Um, What's the main factor? What are the main? Who are the main people about this world? Yeah, fans. You, you think so? The main. Okay, so if there are fans and football players. Ah, uh, football and it's players. Usually, uh, a break. Yeah. Most of good. championships. Most of countries' championships. Mm -hmm. Yes, now we're getting something. Excellent, yes. So how would you put this and in the it's nice vacation? Sentence? And it's vacation time for lots of fans. <laughs> <laughs> like football is nothing without fans. <laughs> of course, absolutely. So it goes hand in hand, you know, football players as well as the fans. Without the fans, there is no business. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> So, uh, and then without the football players, there's no entertainment. So the fans are not going to be happy. So both have to coexist. So give me a, I don't know, can you, can you think of a nice sentence where you can use a preposition of time here? Okay. Okay, the World Cup usually takes place in June and July because mm -hmm. It's time for break in the mouth of uh, professional cut. leagues. Yeah, professional leagues. Yeah. Yes, excellent. Very good. Yeah, I'm very happy with that sentence. So this is the main reason, actually. Yeah. So if they choose to be, uh, if, it, if they choose it to be held in a South American country or anywhere in the Southern Hemisphere, June and July is going to be winter. Uh, so it has to be then because all the major competitions or the, the world leagues are, have a break then, right? And actually they're off, the world's finished. 
So that's the main reason. Right. So that's that. OK, so now I'm, let's practice a bit more. Or let me assess you, rather. And uh, oh, man, this new Hangouts is so slow. I always have to wait for the things to pop up. You know, on the left side and the top, you don't see anything unless you move the mouse around. It's so annoying. Yeah, yeah. It, used to, it used to be better before. I, don't know. I mean, it looks kind of nice and all that. It's, it's convenient, but you know, you have to move left and right. Anyways, so um, Heidi, let's begin with you. I'm going to give you uh, either a time or a day or whatever, and I want you to give me a sentence using the correct preposition of time. What time? Uh, what preposition? So you can use any of them. I'm not going to tell you which one to use. We have to decide. So make a sentence with Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Tuesday. Mm -hmm. mm, Tuesday. Mm. Um, Tuesday. I'm going to the bank. Um, I'm going to the bank on Tuesday. At Lovely. Yep. At 11. Oh, nice. So you're giving me another preposition there for timing. OK, that's good. So I won't ask you another question then. <laughs> you've given me two already. Excellent. Yeah, I know Heidi is very good at this. This is um, too simple for you. So thank you, Heidi. That's good. Vladimir, let's move on to you. Um, dinner time. Dinner time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> what do I do at dinner time? <laughs> Actually, you know, it's it, it's five minutes uh, for dinner time, isn't it? Before dinner time starts, isn't it? You, you said at one a.m. sometimes. You <laughs> this is your last meal. Uh, yeah. Almost. Almost. <laughs> Okay, I will eat. Uh, I will curd and yogurt at dinner time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you positive? Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm just trying to trick you. Yes, it, it is. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Well done. Um, okay, I'll give you one more. Okay. Mm, I don't okay. Mind. The Renaissance. Another Renaissance. Renaissance. Oh, okay. Okay, like uh, Leonardo da Vinci was painting in Renaissance. Mm -hmm. Positive. Yeah. 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 It is in. Excellent. In it represents period, yeah, a period of you know, time, a long period of time, especially. Very good. Well done. Uh, see, sometimes we get these little doubts. I, I, I hope that in in the near future, or maybe you already don't have these doubts, but it's good when you don't have those doubts. You know, it's second nature. So when I say it, off, oh, in, at, on, whatever, before, after, okay. Uh, but no problems. You've done you've done well. So Vyaslav, here we go. A couple for you. Okay. July fourth. On the fourth uh, July of uh, on the fourth of July, I will go to uh, to, to to desert. Desert. Yeah, that's good. On the fourth of on the fourth of July, I will go to the desert. Nice. Okay. And one more for you. Uh, New Year's Day. New Year's Day. In New Year's Day, I will drunk. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I, I will. <laughs> I will be. Yeah? I will be, okay. 
Okay, can you say the sentence again for me, please, from the beginning? Complete. In, in New Year's, I will okay. be drunk. Mm. Vladimir and Heidi, what do you think? Is it correct to say in here? Do you agree with uh, VS1? In, in what? He said no. uh, on. On the New Year's Day. On the, on the New Year's Day. New Year's Day is the same as birthday, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my birthday. No, actually, in, in Russian, New Year's Day means almost two weeks. <laughs> 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 so, like, you <laughs> begin to, <laughs> to drink. <laughs> and it's a long on, day. Yeah, on <laughs> Party time. first of December, and you finish. <laughs> On <laughs> middle of January, maybe yeah, end of January. on the middle of January. Excellent. Yeah. So remember that. On, yeah? on the middle or in the middle? Only if somebody haven't power. Uh, sorry. On the middle of January or in the middle of January? What do you think? <laughs> Heidi. <laughs> It's kind, kind of se it's kind of several days. Hmm. Days in, in the middle of January or on the middle uh, on the middle of January. In, I think in sounds better. Ah, uh -huh. do you agree? In. On. Yeah. You start things on. <laughs> so two versus on. one. <laughs> it's the yeah. same uh, how in New Year. Yeah. So if you use middle, uh, you would probably you have to use in in the middle. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> the same as in in the begin. Yeah, in the beginning. Yes. In, in the, the beginning. beginning. In the Pos end. In the end. Yeah. Excellent. It's like a position. It's a specific position. In okay. one second. Yeah. In one second. I'll be back in one second. Yeah, this will be something else. Okay, guys. That's good. Any questions? Mm -hmm. No. So just remember, every time we talk, we, we uh, you know, talk about day or birthday, New Year's Day, we say in or on. On. On, on some yes. on day. Yes, because it's a specific day or, or specific date. So on Christmas, uh, on New Year's Eve, on New Year's Day, and so on. Okay, guys, excellent. Well, if there are no other questions, then uh, I'll let you go. Have a good night or a good day for Heidi, and it's the beginning of her day. And I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. You're welcome anytime. Okay, guys. Bye bye. Bye bye.